Hello, and welcome to a new edition of Cheap Homes. Um, for those of you who saw that last video uh, I posted and took down, well, <laughs> you got a truth of, uh, of who you're listening to, I guess. Um, I uh, wanted to uh, speak a little bit about what's going on uh, in the economy. I think the only thing I told you to buy is euros. Uh, gold or night, yeah, euros, gold, and silver. Now we're down. We're, we're, I think we're actually headed south on the on the euros. I think the dollar is actually strengthening in the midterm over the next, uh, say, three or four months. And uh, <clears throat> the markets, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got a whole new bubble starting with this AI, which I do have some investment in. Uh, uh, you know, I have some Tesla, I have some Soundhound, which the Soundhound is a um, company that does the the audio for AI. I don't know. I want to talk to a robot, this thing is going to be able to make it so that it understands it. <laughs> um, the other thing is, um, oh, Tesla. I own some Tesla. I'm actually up now on my Tesla. I'm going to sell it because I'm actually... Uh, Banking on a big crash. I have, I have some some inverse stock, three times inverse stock. I've only played this game one other time, and I came out way ahead. Uh, right now, I'm down five percent on my FAZ. It's called F A Z. And if uh, you're gonna start trading, if you don't trade, I'm really, you know, trying to talk to people who have never traded uh, before in their lives. Uh, I would suggest you download TD Ameritrade. TD Ameritrade will give you the best fills. A fill is, you know, order fill, like, you know, give you the best price. But they don't trade Bitcoin on there. Uh, I don't know, Bitcoin or, or crypto. I almost bought that Pepe thing. I had to buy $500 worth. <laughs> I was gonna buy it, you know, directly. <laughs> I would have made tons of money, but I didn't feel like taking out the debit card. I was, little lean so um anyway i'm i'm keeping most of what i got on the side and um waiting for this market to crash i think we'll see a little disruption with this uh, debt ceiling negotiations going on i don't think it's well it's not going to be as smooth as <laughs> these guys they don't do anything smooth um but um i think the, the you'll see you'll you'll see um a bit of a recovery actually even prior to uh I'm resolving the debt set. Now, if they, if they don't come to a deal, I forget. Yeah, it's a good thing I have a lot of money on the side because I'm gonna, or a lot of money to me, I'm gonna throw it in. Um, I wanted to actually uh, share a story of, uh, you know, my my trading background, my uh, uh, my educational background, <clears throat> and um, tell you a little bit about me. I did a little bit for my father on the last video. But uh, I, uh, I actually worked uh, in the financial sector at a very young age. I was 17 years old, and I was uh, a runner on the Comex Exchange down in New York City in the World Trade Center. You know, like you see in the movies, all those guys in the ring, sell, sell, buy. But I worked there. That's why I'm big on the fills, because we had a saying, screw the little guy. You came with a one-lot order, you were getting shafted on the price. Um, but, yeah, it was a lot of fun there. Actually, um, my boss, Jake, he, uh, he offered me a job at the end of the summer. I was supposed to go back to high school. The guy who... Um, I was a runner. I just worked in the booth, and I took the orders, stamped them in, brought them to him, blah, blah, blah. But there's a guy there who held the book, you know, because if you're going to... Man, shave a little bit off the customers again. Have a guy holding the book, keep everything straight. I was gonna. He, Jake offered me his job. Unfortunately, uh, I didn't even. <laughs> I didn't even ask my parents if I could just stay. I should have. Would have been the best thing for me. Uh, dropped out of high school and went to work on the Comex Exchange. Oh boy, that's like. Why I didn't, but it is what it is. So anyway, I loved it down there. I loved the guys down there. It's party wild. <laughs> I didn't go out. I was 17, so they, they were so, they were like, uh, maybe we'll hang out and this and that. 
<laughs> they go to the bar. These these guys are in their they're in their twenties, <laughs> Ivy Leaguers, <laughs> money here, cocaine. Oh. Uh, I hope I would have stayed away from that cocaine. Never got into that. But, uh, you know, I eventually went back to college. Um, <laughs> I went to college for a long time. Went to Norwalk Community College for a while. Then I went to the University of Connecticut. I did very well at the University of Connecticut. I, I studied um, I was a Bachelor of General Studies with a concentration in law and society. My, my uh, junior college was a, a degree in business administration. And I went into law school, Cleveland State University. I'm not going to tell the story about Cleveland State. It's pretty funny. Maybe I will someday. But, uh, yeah, uh, I had a real interest in the law. I, I, I still love getting arrested because then I get to go into court and do what I wanted to do <laughs> with my life. Go in there, I hammer them. I've only represented myself once, and I won. The case was dismissed. <laughs> yeah. So much for Cleveland State. Who needs Cleveland State, right? So anyway, um, my undergrad degree really focused on geopolitics. I mean, the, the valuable stuff. The rest of those, uh, the geopolitics. I learned how to analyze this kind of stuff, and uh, which Kamala isn't take, hasn't taken the White House yet, so I'm still off. And Putin, or, or Xi Jinping didn't stand and end the war in Ukraine. But I think, uh, well, he will. And she will. She's your next president. Now I'm voting for Trump. Because <laughs> I like a loser. <laughs> so anyway. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the study of that stuff I learned there. And, uh, you know, the law... You know, I learned the law the hard way as a criminal defendant. Uh, you know, I'm not really the kind of guy that's like, eh, how can I... Although well, now I've gone to jail so many times for, and haven't made a penny off of any of it. Just someone was an asshole, put their hands on me, and I put the boots on them. Uh, that I think, like, well, maybe, you know, I'm going to go to jail anyway, so maybe sure figure out how to, like, I don't know, make a dollar. <laughs> uh, anyway, so... Um, yeah, uh, and, and the way I got started trading was I was actually on probation in Springfield, Massachusetts, and I was in this AIC program. If that's your situation, you know what? If you're in Springfield, Massachusetts, or wherever you are, they have these programs all over. In Springfield, the sheriffs run it over, run it. I tell you to get involved. It's even better there because, like, we go there and, like, well, 90% of the people there, they're, they just got out of jail, so... You know, you, you just got out of jail. It's like, you know, my father's a banker. Like, you know, bankers, they, they meet, they automatically, it's like match made in heaven. But anyway, uh, no, I met a guy there. We were talking and this and that. And, um, you know, I gave him some, um, he was talking about wanting to start a business. And I, I had looked into the junk hauling business. So I gave him some pointers, this and that, how I do it, where I see, you know, you could take it, whatever. Um, uh, you know, this guy's really down, you know, like, <laughs> he, he didn't even have a car, but he was going to buy a car. I said, well, you know, I'll buy a pickup truck and then you can haul junk on the side, you know, who knows, you get it rolling, you know, get insurance plan, talk with the, um, with the local contractors, talk with the local real estate agents, property developers, you know, they always got stuff they got to, they got to get out of there. Someone's coming to inspect. So anyway, um, yeah, he, uh, we were talking, we were going to, we were, we were seeing like, oh, if we put some money in a bank, they'll give us like 50 bucks for opening up an account. That's that kind of stuff. We had a list, of, I had a list, I thought of a made up of 12 banks I could do this, like $20 here, put $2,000. I never did it. But anyway. He had downloaded, um, I think it was Robinhood. I didn't even, I knew about these apps, but he would download it and he says, uh, he says, yeah, look at, I got five dollars just for downloading this app. They gave him, and uh, he, they gave him five dollars, I think, in Bitcoin. And at the time, Bitcoin was $10,000. And I looked at it, I said, that, 
that's my that's going low. <laughs> it went down to three thousand. COVID was well shortly on its way. We're already here, but we just didn't talk about it. Anyway, uh, I don't even know that guy's name. Never ran into him again. But um, so yeah, that's that's kind of uh, you know my background, and that's that's what I've done. And um, yeah, I. I would still say I know the housing market is going back up and if Chris in Vermont if you're watching I know you're pissed because you're like you told us to wait you told us well wait 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 <laughs> you got a lot of idiots out there trust me um, uh, I told you to buy gold gold is up since then I told you you know buy currency in a nation you would visit and I am going to buy some euros, but I'm going to wait. I think it'll get close to even a euro for a dollar. Right now I get a little less, like 92% of a euro for a dollar. Um, and I'm going to talk about some of the stocks. Um, they got, I, I bought some Invitae and I sold it. <laughs> That's the Kathy Woods pump from ARK Invest. If you don't know her, Google her. Pretty, eh. Uh, <laughs> she says he bought so it's gonna go and then it's gonna drop and it dropped it's like down to a dollar now so that's good I made some money there uh, I made most of the money uh, that I made recently on those penny stocks I got like a I got like a 100% return in, within a week on those um, and I'm really looking to get out you know I I have some European stocks. I own some Porsche. I think Porsche is a, a good buy. Nothing's a good buy now, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. And this isn't financial advice. I'm just, you know, talking nonsense. But um, I like high-end, expensive label stuff. Ferrari, I might buy into that. Porsche, well, I'm into that. Uh... It looks like I, mean, I kind of like it as an EV play. Um, Mercedes, I'll tell you what. For fully automated vehicles, Tesla and Mercedes are is one or the other. I buy both of them because this AI is going to have the... Hey, Tesla's got this app that they've already created that when these cars are self-driving, you buy a Tesla, right? You're gonna go, you're getting your Tesla, it's gonna drive you to work, it's gonna take an hour, right? And all day when you're at work, that car is gonna be out operating on its own, on the app, picking up fares. So you're gonna be making money. They're gonna charge a fortune for this, uh, for this self-driving program. And it's gonna pay because they're gonna say, hey, look, you're gonna pay Ten thousand dollars to get the car self-driving, but you're gonna make twenty off the uh, running it off the app over the next two years. Oh, okay. Um, there's some other things I'm I'm interested in. Some other things I know. Um, if there's anybody out there that ever wants to start a landscaping business, and I'm talking, you know, like one guy. You want to start? You got one guy. Uh, you got a a pickup truck and a lawnmower. I don't even care if you got a, a four-door sedan, a two-door sedan with a decent sized trunk, you can put a 20-inch mower and that's where I started my first landscaping business. But I lost it so many t the business so many times because I kept, uh, well, wasn't able to appear at work, let's say, put it that way. Uh, but I started so many, I, I, I know how to start in terms of getting the customers, just uh, give me a holler. If you want to see that video, I'll make it. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's when I started trading stocks. So I was, as soon as the pain, as soon as the COVID got to Italy, I said, "Oh, it's going to be here," you know. So I knew the economy is going to holy hell. And uh, I tell you, just stay out of stay out of the market. Don't buy a car either. You want to buy a car? Okay, you buy a car in the fall. You can think about buying a car. Now watch, I'll go out and buy a car. I'll be the one to buy a car. <laughs> That's how it works. But uh, I told you not to buy any stocks. What did I do? I went and bought stocks. Uh, and by the way, I need a girlfriend to like 
regulate me, keep me disciplined to do what I say I'm going to do. So if there's any uh, anyone out there looking for a, a position as a girlfriend, uh, let me know. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at. Um, I think they're gonna they're gonna come to a plan, but they're gonna play hardball. Either one of them will bend in the end if they have to. They both. They both. They both will. And um, sorry, I'm tired. Um. Yeah. So let me know uh, if you want to see that video on starting a landscaping business. I'm actually uh, I've been applying for jobs as a um, truck recruiter, truck driver recruiter, because I can do it from anywhere. And I can make decent money, and I got a plan on where this is going to go. Uh, but I can't get a job doing it. So I'm actually thinking I'm actually going to... I've learned a lot about it online, YouTube videos, da-da-da-da-da. But if I can't get a job here soon, I'm going to start my own company and just trip over myself. Um... So yeah, don't buy a house, don't buy a car, don't be like me and buy stocks. No, do not buy any stocks. Save your money, bank every penny you can. I don't care if, you know, um, you, you, your income is, listen, my income's 1200 I make $1,200 a month. So, and I figure out how to save something to invest it because... I know if I don't save something and invest it, if today is economically hard, but I spent everything I have today, then tomorrow, well, I made $300 this week and I spent $300, well, I should have spent $275 and saved $25 bucks and invested it, bought some stock. Uh, Invitae is a great stock to buy. Tesla I like. Indie, SoFi, um, Neo is eh, geopolitical, but don't buy stocks yet. But when I do, when I do, uh, well, you'll know because you'll be like, ah, the market crashed, everybody's broke. Um, but that's when you want to, when everybody's out spending money, you don't want to spend money. And when no one is investing and the market tanks, that's when you want to invest. When no one is buying a home and everybody's house is getting foreclosed on, that's when you want to buy a home. Okay, now we're kind of, the timeline here for that to happen, I think is a little, eh, it'd be better if we were talking a year ago. But listen, just shave, save everything you can, every last penny. I mean, I'll someday I'll make a video about some of the dumb things I do to save money. You'll be like, this guy's okay, all right. But um, yeah, so um, debt ceiling, you're gonna see some volatility. It's gonna go down. Go up. Are we gonna default on our debt? Well, if we're complete idiots. Um, is 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 the um, the national deficit becoming a big problem? Yes, uh, I think we will have a rise in interest rates at the next uh, Fed meeting, and the reason being is because there's an outside force here that nobody's talking about, and we're trying to preserve the dollar as this world standard currency, and. Uh, you know, being fiscally responsible and bringing down inflation and raising interest rates will look good for the dollar. That's why they're going to raise interest rates. They're going to make us hurt. Like, they got to get this stuff in order because <laughs> if you're in America, you're in a sinking ship. Um... Uh, yeah, you know, I like to, I am going to comment on something that's, this, um, this guy who was killed in, uh, the subway down in New York, I mean, if someone, first of all, why is someone who's mentally disabled 
even hungry. Hello? Like, if we're gonna make humans, there's gonna be people who are mentally disabled. It's just gonna happen. But why is that person hungry? Why is anybody hungry, first of all? But it's just... Uh, and why did somebody put their hands on him? Because the guy, is from everything I've read, he hadn't assaulted anybody. He hadn't even directly threatened anybody. He didn't say he's going to punch someone in the mouth. And this guy puts him in a chokehold and kills him. Listen, I know the guy was probably thinking he was doing the right thing. He was going to be a hero. But uh, listen, the fact is you killed somebody. You took someone's life. You have to go. <laughs> you have to go do some time for that. Um, and, you, you know, uh, what I hope the society gains from this is, you know, <laughs> it kind of coincides with, oh, the gun laws. We, we want to take all the mentally disabled people and put them in a cage. Take them off the street. Stop mass shootings. This and that. But, I mean, what is the level of care and responsibility this society is taking for mentally disabled people if we've got a guy on a subway in some type of altered mental health state who's asking for food? Uh, so you want to put them all in like cages and then they'll, well, they'll all have food. Well, maybe if the guy had food, he wouldn't have been so pissed off. You want to see what happens to me when I don't eat? Whoa. Stay away. <laughs> don't come over unless you've got a Snickers bar. <laughs> Throw it under the door before you knock. Uh, but yeah, it's funny how like, okay, this was the guy's problem. So we're going to do this. And the other forces... Well, these people have the right to a gun. So we're going to, I figured it out. We're going to have to lock up 2 million people in mental institutions to make a dent in the number of mentally ill people committing mass shootings. And who's going to decide this? <laughs> who goes and who doesn't go? Uh, like uh, the racist stuff on TV with this equity reparations like you want somebody you want to get paid for what somebody did to somebody else and then you want me to pay for it because somebody listen, you, <laughs> good luck I sit at home <laughs> you pay your own reparations have a good night <laughs>